Humbled is the word I'm going with. And I don't mean humbled as in, oh, see, the Mariners really aren't good and the Guardians humbled them to remind them of that. I mean humbled in the sense that the Mariners were red hot. After winning game one, I think that was their ninth win in 10 games or eighth, eight, and nine, eight wins in nine games. I'm not sure which one. Cleveland's a really good team. Mariners been playing great ball. It seemed like every day they were ga- they were adding to their division lead. And the last two days, you played a really good baseball team. They got you. That lead went down just a little bit. And it's just a reminder that it's not going to go perfectly the rest of the way. There's going to be highs. There's going to be some lows. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post game recap. Mariners win that win. That would be nice. Mariners lose this one today, six to three to the Guardians. They fall to 44 and 33 on the year. They have an eight game lead on Houston, the AL West, and eight and a half over the idle Texas Rangers. Do me a favor, smash that like button, comment your thoughts in the game. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Listen, I I talked about it a few times. There's big picture from a game and there's little picture. Little picture, it's a frustrating game, right? Um, You felt like going in, you had the pitching matchup advantage. You actually did get a lot of base runners against Logan Allen. You just didn't really capitalize on those base runners enough. And Luis Castillo was just middle, middle with a lot of changeups. I don't know if that was new working with Mitch Garver. Could just be Cleveland's lineup is so left-handed heavy that they went, that they went with a lot of changeups against it. But, you know, Castillo's got to be better. He has got to be better. He is supposed to be the ace of the staff. Still love me some Luis Castillo. But that was a game that the Mariners twice gave him a lead. Not going to defend the offense. They should have done more too. But twice Castillo got to go out there with a the lead and both times gave it back to Cleveland, and you can't have that. That's a playoff series. This is the type of teams you're going to play in the playoffs as a team like Cleveland, and you need your ace to step up and win that game. And whether that's Castillo, Kirby, Gilbert, I don't care. It applies to all of them. You know, you've got to take advantage and win that game. And even though three wasn't enough off Logan Allen, there's some games, yeah, your ace needs to make a three. You know, I know they weren't up three nothing, but needs to make three runs hold up. It's possible. So, you know, Castillo not good enough, offense not good enough, bullpen kind of whatever, and it it leads to a loss. And, you know, big picture here, there's a couple big picture things to talk about with this game. Listen, if we're just talking division, yes, I know they, excuse me, they were up 10 two days ago, and now they're up eight. This does not mean that the Mariners are starting the downfall here, right? I, I get it. If you're in that panic mode, we're not used to this. You know, I, I think if you were to t- talk to Seahawks fans in 2016, we'd all feel pretty good. Like, hey, we know this team can win. We've seen them win a Super Bowl. We've seen them win divisions. We haven't seen this Mariner team win divisions. I mean, some of us have, but I mean, look at me. I'm I'm almost, I'm old. And in 2001, last time this team won division, at this point, I wasn't even starting high school yet. I mean, like, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's new to us. So I think we all kind of expect the other shoe to drop a little bit. I don't think this indicates anything like that. There's going to be bumps in the road. That division lead's going to come down at some point. That's why the 10-game lead was so great. It's not that I think the Mayor's going to win the division by 10 games. It's just that it gives you a lot of buffer where you can have tough stretches. Even if the Mayor's lose the next three and Houston wins the next three, you still have a five-game lead, which is fairly substantial. And there's going to be days where you win and Houston and Texas lose again. So it's going to do a little of this. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. If you had told me on June 20th, the Mayor's on an eight-game lead in the division, not a single one of us wouldn't have signed up for that. So from that big picture aspect, whatever. However, Cleveland is a team you're trying to chase, right? Cleveland's right now. Cleveland right now is the two seed. You're the three seed. It's a big difference. Cleveland would get the wild card series off. The Mayor's have to play Minnesota. Minnesota's tough, and they are tough against right-handed pitching, which, which the Mayor's have a lot of. I'm getting way ahead of myself looking at playoff matchups. But that's a pretty big difference between we don't have to play and then we have to play the Twins. Cleveland has the tiebreaker, and they're ahead of you. You cannot win that tiebreaker now against Cleveland. If the Mariners want to be the two seed, they are going to have to finish with a better record than the Cleveland Guardians this season. No ties. You got to finish a game better. You know, is that the end of the world? No, not at all. But it is a little bit of a negative. And this team has struggled really on the road to beat good teams. I don't know if I mentioned it already, but their first, Mariners are first in ERA at home, but like 24th or 25th or ERA on the road. Now, obviously, T-Mobile is a pitcher's park. I expect most teams to pitch better there, but not that big of a gap. This pitching staff is too good to have the 24th or 25th ERA on the road. You know, they're, they're too talented of a pitching staff 
for that to be happening. So that that's a little bit frustrating. And if you want to win, you're going to have to win on the road. If you want to win this division, or if you want to win in the playoffs, you have to win some road games. You know, you can get home field advantage and just win the home games, but that's probably not going to happen either. You're probably going to drop a home game. So you're going to have to find a way. And Cleveland's a team you will play in the playoffs. You're going to have to find a way to to, to beat them. And they're tough. They, they, they kind of have that MO that beats the Mariners. They put the ball in play. They make contact with pitches in the zone. The Mariners are always throwing pitches in the zone, which is great. But the Mariners are in the strike zone a lot, right? And Cleveland is not a team that misses much. It's kind of funny. The Mariners pitching staff is like tailor-made to beat the Mariners. Is I don't know. I just kind of feel that way. It's kind of funny how that worked out. I, I Listen, I don't think they're incapable of shutting down Cleveland's offense. It's just that it's going to be tough. And they have a lot of left-handed bats in that lineup as well, which makes it just a little bit tougher. And, you know, like I said, just losing a series to them. Am I losing sleep over that? No, Cleveland's good. You went in there, you won one, lost two. There's good teams that have come to Seattle and lost series. But as we get further into the season, closer to the playoffs, it is important to look at these matchups and go, this is a team you could face in the postseason. How do you match up against them? Did I leave this series thinking that Seattle is, you know, can't beat Cleveland in a playoff series? No, I think they could. But you, you got to figure Cleveland would have the confidence a little bit that they, you know, more confidence, at least in the Mariners, that they could do it. So it, it'd be nice to go on the road and beat one of these teams and go, hey, I know the Mariners can handle this and beat a team like this because they've gone to Yankee Stadium split. Baltimore, they lost two out of three. Minnesota, they lost three out of four. Kansas City, they lost two out of three. And now Cleveland, they lose two out of three. Again, like that's not the end of the world. Those are good teams. And you know, they could sweep you potentially. So it's the losses don't bother me, but when you put it all together and you're trying to shape a picture for how does this team reach the ultimate goal, it's tough, right? And you're going to have to play road games. So, you know, nothing that I'm panicked about, but just little things to keep an eye out. And this series, another, another reason with the word humble, it does remind us that the Mariners do need to make some moves and do need, do need to, they do have flaws that they need to improve on. It's easy in the winning to kind of ignore the flaws. I do it, I, not ignore it, but you know, when you win a game two to two to one on a walk off home run, like Mitch Garver versus the Braves, that game, you know, it's kind of easy to gloss over that the offense struggled that game and go, Hey, they got the big hit when it mattered. And listen, as fans, that's what we should do. It's fun to root for our teams. You should never apologize for being happy that your team wins a game. Never. However, it is easy to kind of forget some of the frustrations. And this series is a good reminder that this is a good baseball team, but there are some flaws. The offense, you know, it, it, it's two steps forward, 1.8 steps back. And you really haven't moved forward all that much. The pitching's great, but they've struggled on the road. Just things to look at is maybe it's a small sample size of on the road. Who knows? But it is stuff that we need to, the, the bullpen on, on Tuesday, right? Like, Still need another bullpen arm down there. So just a lot of little things to, to be reminded of. Let's get into the box score. Uh, like I said, Luis Castillo is just not very good today. Five innings, eight hits, five runs. All earned, two walks, four Ks. Gives up two home runs. I believe both were to Brennan, um, who's been a Mariner killer. I think he was actually the guy last year when the Mariners had two outs on the Guardians in the bottom of the ninth and Matt Brash was trying to get the save. I think it was Brennan that hit the RBI double that tied the game. So he's been a bit of a... Thorn for the Mariners as well. Like I said, I mean, a lot of change-ups that felt middle-middle, very change-up heavy game from Castillo. Does make some sense against all the lefties in Cleveland's lineup, but bottom line is they weren't quality change-ups, and, and Cleveland made him pay. Castillo was not sharp, needs to be better. I think he will be, but need a little bit more. You need a little bit more from your ace. I, I will say that. Bullpen was fine. No Thornton gave up a run, but saw Stan. Here's the thing about Thornton, the run he gave up. You weren't getting two runs off Emmanuel Classe anyways. I don't think you're getting one. Now, it hurts. It pushes. It makes it harder. But, I, you know, I, you weren't getting that run anyways. So once the eighth was over, th this ball game was over. Sauce and stand up look pretty good. Start, struck out a couple batters in the seventh. Sauce doesn't strike anybody out, but does not give up a run. Offensively, like I said, against Allen, and this is really in the first seven innings, Mariners get five hits, five walks. They have 10 base runners, but just too many, too many, starts, but they don't finish. You know, they hit a good drive off the tee and then they're just all over the place the rest of the hole. And you drive for show, you putt for dough. I don't know how that fits too much into baseball, but you don't get rewarded for just getting lead off guys on. You got to bring them home. 
Top of the first inning, JP singles, Dylan Moore homers, Julio singles. Beautiful start. First three guys reach. Mitch Garver's ahead three and one in the count. Allen gets him to ground over a double play. I'm telling you, if you're Logan Allen, he took a huge deep breath after that. You know why? He's sitting there going, okay, two outs, nobody on. I gave up a couple runs. My offense is going to get that back. Let me just settle in here. He walks Garver there. Garver gets a hit first and second. Nobody out. You know, you start to worry a little bit. Now this could become a really big inning. This could spiral on you before your team's even had that bat. You're going to have to throw 30 pitches to even get out of the inning. And listen, Allen executed Garver ground double play. It happens, but it's just, it's those things. You've got to make that inning a little bit bigger. They had leadoff guys reach in a ton of innings here. Let me go back and pull up the rest of the box score. Top of the second, Mitch Hanniger leads off with a walk. Three straight outs. Top of the third, Dylan Moore, one out walk, gets to second, don't score. Top of the fourth, um, Ty France leads off with a hit by pitch. They do end up scoring when Robles walks and Ryan Bliss doubles, but then runners in second and third with two outs. JP grounds out. You get the hit there, 5-2. Maybe you make something happen. Maybe you do win that game. Maybe that's enough for Castillo. He settles in a little bit, gets you the win. Top of the seventh, first two reach with nobody out. JP flies out to center. Dylan Moore double play after being up 3-0 in the count, inning over. Uh, you could have pinched hit for Dylan Moore there with Rojas or Rayleigh. I probably would have. Dylan Moore's having a good game. I'm not as up in arms about that as some people were um, just because of the game Demo was having. But maybe not a bad spot for Rojas. But regardless, someone's got to make a play, no matter who it is. Someone's got to find a way to get on base there, fight, and, and help get those runs in. They're setting up okay, but they're not finishing. And it's something I've talked about a lot with this team. Like, I don't think today was actually like a terrible offensive performance. It's just, you're not finishing. I, I don't know how else to really say it. Like, it wasn't like they didn't have any base runners all day. They did. It's just, who's going to put that ball in the gap? You know, even like that JP at bat in the fourth, I'm not trying to like blame JP here or anything, but JP puts one in the gap there, 5-2. I would not be shocked if the Mariners win that game. Then maybe in the seventh inning, let's say you're up 5-3, Maybe JP grounds out, Dylan Moore, sack fly or something. You're up 6-3. You know, little things like that. So it, it all adds up. That first inning, let's say Mitch Garver, you know, takes that 3-1 pitch. I'm not saying he should have, but does. And the next pitch is a ball. And now you're set up for a pretty big inning here. So it's all those just little microcosms of this team that, you know, you can get away with with Chicago. You can get away with it against the Angels. Can't get away with can't get away with it against Cleveland with the weapons they have at the back end of their bullpen and their offense. So that is that. Let's go through the box score. JP was one for fourth leadoff hit. Dylan Moore, despite that double play, does have a good day. Uh, two run home run and a walk. Demo actually had a pretty nice series. Julio had the base hit in the first. Garver tough game over three. Cal pinched hit was over one. Uh, Ty was over two but did walk and got hit by a pitch. So Ty on base twice. Mitch Hanniger over three with a walk. They've got to get Mitch Hanniger going. And they've either got to get him going or they're going to have a decision to make. Now, they love Mitch Hanniger's leadership. I know that. I do too. Love his presence in the clubhouse. I believe all that matters. I don't want Mitch Hanniger gone, but maybe like a phantom IL stint where he's still in the dugout. Because right now, here's the thing. And maybe Mitch gets hot. Anytime I see him to criticize a player, they go on a hot streak. There's some signs. I've seen some signs where Mitch looks fine, but you're not getting much defensive value. You're not getting much on the base paths. Mitch Hanniger right now is worse than Victor Robles. Robles is hitting better than Hanniger, at least on the for time on the Mariners, and he's a better defensive player. Like, you would be better off, and he's going to be better on the base paths. You'd be better off playing Robles. You're going to get more value. Now, you know, if you ask me who's going to be the better hitter the rest of the year, I would take Mitch Hanniger. So I'm, I'm just making a point that you're not getting much right now from Mitch. He's got to be better. He did work a walk today, but man, you especially against lefties. And he's been awful against lefties this year, surprisingly. But you really, really need him to get going. Uh, Locklear 0 for 3. Rojas pinched hit was 0 for 1. Robles was 1 for 2 with an infield hit and a walk. And he just missed a home run earlier in the game. Robles has been a nice addition. I don't think he's a very good hitter. I don't think that'll last. But... He's done a nice job so far since coming over. So he's actually kind of giving you the value that you'd like out of that fourth, fifth outfielder. I've been really impressed. I've liked what I've seen from Victor Robles. He's been a nice addition 
Uh, Rayleigh was 0 for 1. And then Ryan Bliss had a nice game, worked a walk, and had an RBI double as well. So good game for Ryan Bliss. That, that seventh inning was frustrating as well because the bottom of the order, I know it was an infield hit, but Robles gets on. Bliss walks. Th- you know, that's another thing. Like, that should have been a big inning. You're turning it back over to the top of the lineup there to JP, Demo, and Julio. And now Julio doesn't bat because of the double play. But man, you should be scoring there. Super frustrating. Listen, you lost a series to a good baseball team. It happens. You found a way to win one. It's not the worst case scenario that could have happened. You're still sitting really pretty in the division. I know Houston gained two games the last two days in Texas, a game and a half. Sure, I'd prefer to keep it at 10. Guys, it's not going to stay at 10. I think we all know Houston and Texas aren't 10 games worse than the Mariners. What it does is it gives the Mariners cushion. And I do think the Mariners are the better team. So you've got a 10-game lead with a little cushion. Now it's eight. Again, eight is still pretty substantial. You know, and again, like it's not going to get cut every day. The Mariners are going to win games. And Houston and Texas are going to lose some games. Houston's got to play Baltimore this weekend, who's really good. Texas plays Kansas City, who's pesky. Seattle goes to Miami to play a bad Marlins team. I will say this. The Marlins, I think, are a little tougher than people think. lazardo has been really good. He's had a couple blow-up starts that make the numbers look really bad. The Marlins are just good enough to be frustrating. I will say that. They're not good, but they do have just enough. And the Mariners have struggled against left-handed pitching. They're going to see three of them in this series. Mariners need to be on their game. This is not going to be some cakewalk sweep in Miami. I will tell you that. That's not being negative on the Mariners. I just, I, I know how some people think. They're going to think, oh, we got to go into Miami and sweep. I will take a series win. Would love a sweep. Would be great to see this team go on the road and really pound a team for three games. I think it's going to be a little bit tougher series than some people think. I, I just have a feeling about that. Um, we'll see. We'll see. It's not to be negative on the Mariners. I think the Mariners are hands down the better baseball team. But don't just assume it's going to be a sweep. But the other teams are playing tough teams as well, or not as well, but they're playing tough teams. Find a way to win two or three, and that leads probably back to nine or something like that. So we'll see what ends up happening. But frustrating game. You know, a little bit of, you know, stuff, big picture that could be come out of this game that's not great. But all in all, the AL Central has been a pest for the Mariners. You're done with Cleveland this year. Dust it away. Let's go get Miami and Tampa the next two series. Have a great night, everybody. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, go Mariners. Peace.